Rhonda Sales' exhibits M to R could not be adduced at trial pursuant to Alberta Rule of Court 158.5 subsection 1E because they were never produced into the action ever before trial. And to the pursuant to the, uh, the Canada Evidence Act C5 sections 28.2 they could not they could only be served seven days before trial. That was against that law. So Justice Hunter jumped over that boundary of the Canada Evidence Act and she jumped over the uh, the rule of court. Anyways, let's get on with uh, cross examine of Exhibit O. We'll go on to the next exhibit, which is Exhibit O. Um, it's an email dated uh, October 3rd. In this email, did you not state, I don't want you to have to sell the medicine hat home, but when that is done, your name will be registered as the only medicine hat owner and I will be the only Calgary homeowner. This should be so I don't feel gypped. If I had not been so confused because of Rhonda Sales' ambush, and if Justice Horner and Rhonda Sales had not dodged neglected trial parameters, if they had respected the law pursuant to the Canada Evidence Act, that requires judges and all parties to respect this act. Sections 28.1 of the Canada Evidence Act states that Rhonda Sales could only have served her new exhibits not less than seven days prior to trial instead of having them served to me while I'm still in the witness box. Then I could have answered like this instead. I find that you have just like the last two exhibits M and N, you've only read what uh, you have highlighted in yellow for this of this exhibit and having what you have only read from this email for the record is deceiving I would like to have the entirety of this email read or at least uh, sentences four to six not just sentences six to eight because having only what you have read sentences six to eight will destroy my case Miss Actum, you have only read for the record just a small sliver of information yes this is my email I did state everything on it this, e this email clearly shows that I was not happy about having put $45,000 down on the Medicine Hat Home with a 13-year mortgage, and then we put uh, only f less than $34,000 down on the Calvary Home with a longer-term mortgage spanning over 25 years. You hoodwinked me, Miss Actum. What should have happened is you letting me know prior to us signing the real estate purchase agreements that you wanted a separation then we could have split all matrimonial 50-50 and not buy these two homes together. I feel that the bank would have, have approved a mortgage for me without you at that time. You could have just done your own thing too. I feel that this is unfair that you should get 95% from the matrimonial and me only getting a measly 5%. We both paid the mortgage equally for over eight years and I feel that it's only fair that there be a 50-50 split, Justice Horner. Now I will read sentences four to eight, Miss Actum, of Exhibit O, an email I sent October 3rd, 2003. I want uh, the 13-year mortgage and equity, and you take the lousy 25-year mortgage and equity. We need to get this done before November 23rd of 2003. I do not want you to have to sell our medicine hat home. When that is done, your name will be registered as the only medicine hat owner, and I will be the only Calgary homeowner. That should be done so I don't feel gypped. When I answered, Justice Hunter neglected that Rhonda Sales's fresh exhibits M to R were not within the boundaries of trial parameters because Rhonda Sales exhibits do not track or trace however, however many homes the parties bought and sold and where the funds all went. We're going to actually listen to uh, go back and listen to uh, those parameters that uh, Justice Rollins set out at pretrial. So we're good to go. You're here on the 17th and 18th of May, then. Yes, sir. 10 a.m. Okay. And um, also, do then not then. bring in. I mean, that's fine. We've got your witnesses. You're both going to do that. You can't. There's been no surprise witnesses. All your disclosures should be there. Uh, everybody should have. Uh, well, I guess whatever documentation you have to trace the funds is what you're going to need to show the trial judge, okay? Trace the funds from however many houses you all got and where it all went. 
I would have been able to answer to Veranda Sales' exhibits M to R, which were indeed my emails. I would have had no problem with her using them in her cross-examination, and for her to use them in her argument, I would have had no problem only if I would have received them, not as an ambush tactic to throw me off kilter. I was not informed at pretrial that these exhibits would be used, and these were not listed in uh, met, uh, in uh, Rhonda Sales's list of exhibits served to me seven days before pretrial. Rhonda Sales' ex exhibits M to R were never produced into the action to trial. Therefore, pursuant to Alberta Rule of Court 158.5, subsection 1E, Rhonda Sales' exhibits M to R could not be adduced at trial. I could have answered to these exhibits properly if trial parameters would have been respected. If it had been given, if I had been given reasonable time before trial, before having to answer to these exhibits, I knew nothing about. This was because Justice Horner prevented me from viewing the exhibits, which were uh, emails I did send. But uh, but being served them in the witness box as a tactic of Rhonda Sales's to ambush me, and Justice Horner's preventing me from viewing them. Was her, was her tactic to, to let me become ambushed with exhibits I knew nothing about. This was a joint tactic of Rhonda Sales' and Justice Horner to confuse me and to throw me off course, totally throw me off kilter. We're going to go back and we're going to listen to that. Um, may I present yep. the exhibits right away to both you and I? Any exhibits you want to question Mr. Acton on, you go ahead and give him a copy and me a copy. That would be correct. Thank you, boss. You give them to the Madam Clerk and she'll hand them to Mr. Acton and myself. Thank you. Okay, maybe just for ease of reference, Ms. Acton, we'll just mark this as Exhibit 2 right now. Okay. And this is a uh, bundle of documents uh, lettered alphabetically from A through R. Yeah. Why don't you give me a few minutes to go through this? You'll have some opportunity. Well, Ms. Actum gets to ask you a question. Oh, okay. Like, your evidence is finished, Mr. Actum. Right. She's just asking you a question. She'll give you an opportunity. She may not direct you to all of these documents, yeah. okay? When you get to cross Ms. Actum, you can use these documents at that time when you go to cross-examine her, okay? Yeah. So, Madam Clerk, we'll mark that as Exhibit 2. Okay, now that we... Uh uh, that, now, you, now you know the uh, the trial parameters that uh, Justice Rollins set out at pre-trial, and uh, you know that the parameters are they're supposed to be documents that track or trace funds of how many houses the parties bought and sold and where it all went. And I challenge anybody to look at those uh, exhibits M to R, and they're going to be up in that corner there, and try to you know see if they can argue with to the fact that they actually do track or trace funds. Of where the of what the houses that the parties bought and where it all went, and uh, and then you know how uh, Justice Horner, you know, sidetracked me when I was trying to look at the uh, exhibits to see if it was something that I knew something about. But you know that there's no way Justice Horner wanted me to go up to uh, to answer to exhibits I would know something about. You know that she didn't want she didn't want me knowing anything about it. So, anyways, we're gonna move on with. Uh, with the cross exam, we're going to hear the cross examin of examination and hit her state of mind, ambush state of mind of Exhibit O here once again, and we'll, then we'll move on to Exhibit P. Thank you. We'll go on to the next exhibit, which is Exhibit O. Um, it's an email dated uh, October third. In this email, did you not state, "I don't want you to have to sell the medicine hat home," but when that is done, your name will be registered as the only Medicine Hat owner, and I will be the only Calgary homeowner. This should be so I don't feel gypped. I didn't have to submit exhibits ahead of time. No, 
That, that's fine, Ms. Sackton. That's fine. So we're on your we're on the email of uh, October third, two thousand and three. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. And w what's your response, Mr. Acton? What was the question again? The area that's highlighted on that exhibit. I don't want. This is Exhibit O. Exhibit O. Or really, Tab O of Exhibit Two. Okay. Did you make this statement? Uh, I don't know. I. I guess it says right there that, uh, that I did, but I can't, I have to confirm that. Like, I have no way of confirming that. You don't email. recall this email. So I don't recall, recall the email. I don't okay. recall it. No. Thank you, Mr. Acton. Next question. I want to thank all of you here for watching the cross-examination of Exhibit O. Rhonda Sales' cross-examination of Exhibit O, her malicious cross-examination of Exhibit O. Now it's time to move on to Exhibit P. Thank you.